Good evening. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Creations by Julie. I am Julie. Ed is behind the camera and going to catch any of your questions or your comments. Uh, tonight, it's all about carrots. I'm going to show you uh, several ideas of ways that you can make carrots with just things around your house. Super, super easy, super simple. You probably will find one that is your favorite and then just make all of yours like that. I'll, I'll go through these and I'll tell you which, which one's my favorite of the ones that I have tried. Uh, let me pull up my Facebook and make sure that we are live. There's a certain way you gotta do it to be able to see it. Okay, I believe that's us and I need to turn down my phone. Oh, you know my phone's been turned down since our last live. <laughs> okay. You know my phone's I, been turned down since Mine's hasn't. <laughs> Mine <is. laughs> Okay. I need to make me a note somewhere, I guess, in all my junk. Turn phone back up because I can't seem to remember to turn it up. Okay, like I said, Ed's behind the camera. Uh, tonight, uh, someone is going to be receiving some supplies to make your own carrot and play around with it. But um, I have quite a few here. Let me go through and just show them to you. A couple of them I made last year, but I'll kind of tell you how we did it. Um, super, super easy. Probably the smallest one, if you want something for your tear tray, it's probably this one. This is just a cute, I don't know how to get closer to the camera, but this is just a cute little carrot that's perfect for tear tray. Um, and it is made out of a clothespin. So I'll show you how to do that. Then if you wanted just to take burlap, you can make one out of burlap just by cutting off a piece and rolling it. Then I have this one that I actually ordered. I thought, well, if you could make a little one, let me get some larger clothespins. But it wasn't what I thought. This is what came in. Now, I was thinking, the other, and they weren't cheap. I don't think I got six of them. They were about two and a half, three dollars each. So, um, I used it to make this burlap one. But I'm thinking it might make a really good uh, magnet on your refrigerator. I've got a couple of small ones that hold things, so. But you do the big one the same way as the little one, only the little one is just painted, and this one is wrapped in jute. Not one of my favorite, but. All right, this is a stuffed one that we did last year with just some polka dot material. Now you'll notice your greenery can be anything that you've got or you can use raffia. This is what I used last year. This year, um, I'm using more of these little sprigs. I've got a couple of bushes of those and I just cut off a few of those. But um, this is one I did this year. And I wanted a couple of bigger ones. I've got a basket on my fireplace with pine cones in it and I'm just sticking the carrots all around that. Um, but this is just done with a t-shirt, and I'm going to cut out another one tonight um, and show you how we did that. And then I just put marks and lines on it. This is probably my favorite. Um, I just like the way it looks. I like the texture, and I made a small one this size and a bigger one this size. And this is just made out of newspaper and twine. Sandy Renshaw wants to know, did you have storms the other night? We did. Well, uh, a lot of rain. We didn't get the bad, bad stuff like North Texas did. Um, but Ed and I were so tired, we slept through it. <laughs> we did get some rain. Um, I think our heavy storms were like we, last week, right? Weren't mm -hmm. they? But um, thank you for asking. But no, we, we didn't get anything real bad here in the south. There's something about us being so close to the coast or something. I guess the, the wind blows them. Most everything is north of Houston. Um, and it's just almost like it starts this way and then it just splits, you know. But uh, thank goodness, we did get a lot of rain. Okay, um, 
Now, another one, I don't have one made up, but I'm going Thank to show you. Thank you, Carrie. I am going to show you um, how to do, and this one turns out really cute too. <clears throat> I did one last year, but I think I gave it away. Now, back to the clothespin for a second. If you're gonna do a clothespin like this, you just take your clothespin apart, take that metal piece off without pinching yourself. Okay, and then you've got these two little pieces like this. And they go flat side to flat side to make more of a carrot look. And um, I would paint them first. And I like to use, now this is a new bottle, it's called Spice Pumpkin from Deco Art. To me it's a good pumpkin color. <clears throat> I hope it's the same as the one I finished off today. But I would paint them first and then put you a little, what I did is use raffia, and I painted the raffia green, but you could use the plastic, this stuff, and just cut off this, and you would want to glue it Karen. inside there. Karen, I'm gonna say hi. Hi, Karen. And you would, so you'd cut off the little knob on that, but then you would just glue it to the inside, and I wrapped a little bit of twine around the top. But that's how you would do, or any size clothespin that you find, that's how you would do the clothespins with. And it makes a cute, small, it's great for a tear tray. But one thing I want to show you, well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I don't know how many of you have ever seen these at Hobby Lobby. They're called Foam Unicorn Horn. And they're back, at my Hobby Lobby, they are back with the um, styrofoam rings and disc and stuff like that hanging on the wall. Uh, in the back part. I had, I, these are still left from last year, and um, I didn't look the other day, but the last time I had looked, they did have them. It was like $3.99, and I don't think they ever put the styrofoam on sale. But that, that's what this is. They're unicorn horns, and they're perfect for a carrot. Someone tonight, when my buzzer goes off, so you wanna make sure you comment a lot. When my buzzer goes off, uh, someone is going to receive one of these unicorns, some greenery, and then I'm going to throw in these cute, these are like bottle brush uh, carrots from the Dollar Tree. And I thought they're really cute, so I'm going to, they look cute on the tear tray too. I'm going to throw those in. So just keep commenting, and then when the buzzer goes off, um, I will swipe through. Let me get it going. Um, and the first comment I see is going to get this other unicorn horn. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by painting this one to give it a few minutes to dry. Then I'm gonna show you, you see this looks a lot brighter than that that's in my. Harry says she wouldn't have thought to use the unicorn horn. I know, but they're perfect. They've even got the little ridges that you can go back in. Uh, this is a little brighter, but maybe it'll dry uh, darker. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same paint that I used last year. I just emptied it. and uh, But so quick and easy. Just paint it. Like I said, it's already got the ridges. Um, Barbara Rose Cream says we're going to get another snow this weekend. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, you know, I like I like snow, but it's because we don't ever get it. Okay. Carrie said, did we have a good visit? Yes, we did. We did. We got to see some um, people. Ed got to see his um, aunt. That's his mother's only living relative. Um, ah, I'm trying to get that set up. And of course, I got to see all my family. All of our grandkids didn't make it, but most of them. Of course, all of our kids were there. Uh, okay. I might have just got paint on my hand. We're going to let that set for a few minutes, and I'm going to give it another coat. And while that is setting, let me just show you if you're interested in the paper. And um, like I said, it turned out to be my favorite one. But all you're going to do, just take newspaper. This would be a small one, and I wrote on it. 
it's a piece of 10 by 10 newspaper like this okay fold it in half once like a triangle and then take it and fold it in half again so this would make the shorter carrot and then it's real simple you're just going to take it let me put the writing to the inside and you're going to kind of get use a little bit of glue at the bottom to get you going and then you're just going to kind of get the bottom of your carrot now you can roll it tighter or you can roll it bigger like an ice cream cone is basically what you're going to have and then glue down the this edge i'm going to go ahead and glue this edge to it first let me get my glue going there and once you get this done you can wrap the twine around it to make one like that and you've got a super quick and easy carrot very inexpensive and by folding the paper it makes it a little harder but you can stuff it with polyfill right now I'm gonna I was very surprised at how easy the ones with the paper were. And I painted one today and I'm going to show you that. All right, once you get it done and glued, hold it there for a second. You're going to take it and you're going to cut it off here at the top and make it straight. And that's going to be the top of your carrot. Okay. Everybody's talking about the bad weather that has rain, snow. And oh, golly. It, Sandra Mitchell says she's ready for spring and summer. Yeah, I think they were saying on the news tonight, uh, you know, North Carolina or South Carolina got it today. I know it went through Alabama, was it Tuesday? Yeah. I believe it was Tuesday. Okay, so you've kind of got your cone shape. Now, you can paint the paper. I did one today. See, this is what I had used before. This doesn't look like it's going to draw near as dark. So maybe it was a darker type pumpkin color. Um, but you just find whatever pumpkin color you like. Most of them have pumpkin in the word. Look for the darker orange. But this is two coats. So you wouldn't have to put twine around it. You could just make paper um, carrots. <laughs> that stopped a minute and think of what we were making. But if you're going to use the twine, then um, you can use the really, really thin twine or you can use this. Now, I'm, gonna I'm not gonna stuff this one because it really is pretty firm like it is with the paper like that. All right, when you get ready to wipe, wrap your twine around, what I like to do is start down a little bit and put the end of the twine down like this and over. And I'm gonna glue on both sides of that. To kind of get it going. And then Nancy you're going to McComb wants to know what the dimensions are. This one was 10 by 10. What the dimensions of what? The paper? Well, it got cut off. I uh, can't uh, this piece of paper is 10 by 10, and it makes a small cone. You, I'm going to show you a larger one here in a minute. This one is going to make you... What did I do with that other one? Probably one about this size, which is a good size. Like you want a garden. square. If you want to go smaller, do nine by nine. Um, but ten by ten is pretty good. And and y'all know how to wrap your your uh, twine round and round and around. 
this twine is larger than the other. And I just every now and then put a little bit of glue just to hold that twine as you're going. And get your carrot shape. So y'all see how I'm just wrapping it. Fair, you know, not tight enough to bend your paper, but enough that you can go all the way up your cone. And it's just, like I said, it's just newspaper. But it makes a really cute carrot. And then I love the textured look of it because, you know, carrots aren't perfect. They have a roughness to them. Okay, so y'all y'all get that. You go all the way up and then, then you paint this um, twine. You can do some just in the brown color or paint them. Let's go back to the, our horn. It's not quite dry. I will be willing to bet y'all there's something I have forgotten today um, that I'm gonna have to send Ed for because I'm using so many different materials. And you took a nap. I did, I got, well I was awake at 5.30 this morning, couldn't go back to sleep, and I was laying on the couch looking at Facebook about 4.30, quarter to five, and I, I just got so tired, I couldn't keep my eyes open. And I told Ed, I have got to close my eyes and lay down here for a second. And I told him to wake me up at 5.30. So there very well could be something that I haven't. Haven't got out here. One thing I can think of right now, but I don't think it's a have to is my um, dryer thing to dry the paint, but I don't think it's a need. All right, I don't know. Got Karen, that Karen Marie says she's seen this way of doing it, but has not tried it yet. It's and very simple, very simple. Barbara Rosecrans said it'd be nice on a basket, but a lot of it's badly. Yeah, that's what I have on my fireplace with pine cones. I actually thought I could make one out of a pine cone. So I got some pine cones, but you know, when you put them, you get some that are really tight. Um, and then, but then when you put them in the oven to kill any of the critters, it kind of opens them up. Um, I painted two small ones like this, but then I couldn't figure out how I wanted to put the greenery at the top to show you. But if you had a bigger pine cone, you could just paint the pine cone and somehow put some greenery at the top. You can't drill a hole because everything it would all fall apart. So I didn't do the rest of the pine cone. All right, now I'm going to show you on a larger to get a longer carrot. This, let's see, I wrote on this one too. I think maybe not. I want to say it's 14 by 14. Let's see, right quick. It's a square, and it is. Almost 18, it's probably 17 by 17. But it'll, it'll make the bigger carrot. So if that one was 10 by 10 and this is 17, if you want to do a medium size, try like a 12 by 12. If you start with kind of a square, or a square, and then you fold it one time, make a triangle, then you fold it again. Karen Hunter says, off topic, when you do the hem stencil in the frame and the over. <laughs> Glass. <coughs> what do you use inside of the frame, and do you seal the glass? Um, you're using ink. The one that I did, I don't. I did some for Mother's Day. Do you remember those I did at Mother's Day? Um, they're going to be inside, and so I didn't seal it. But you can't s spray it with what you would normally spray the wood with. Uh, but you could maybe just take a, a heat gun that doesn't get too hot and just run the heat gun over the glass for just a few minutes because it's heat that sets it. And it's more um, a lower steady heat because if you're going to put it in the oven, you put it in a cold oven and turn it on and then, and then turn it off and let it cool. I would just take my heat gun on that. Now the question about the inside of the frame, is that what was the question of the what I put on the inside. You could uh, actually do uh, those 
really thin canvas panels. Um, what do you use inside the frame? I, I usually just put, like do my either paint. You could even do the cardboard that comes with your picture frame or cover it with scrapbook paper. If you cover it with scrapbook paper, be careful when you stencil because if you don't have it sealed, now that you could take out of the frame, uh, mod podge the scrapbook paper on it and then seal it with either wax or the spray um, 2X Rust-Oleum and let it dry and then stencil on it. But you could even use a fabric. You could cover that part of the frame. You just want something to fit in that frame and I would just take the backing type thing, cover it with fabric and then you could um, stencil on the fabric and then put it back in the frame. I have used those really thin canvas panels, but not with the glass put back in it. Those that I've used, there wasn't room to get the panel to go all the way in there. And then, Ed, can you cut that off? And then put the glass on too. So you probably couldn't do that, but just a piece of cardboard. Okay, let me see who's going to receive our carrot. Carrie Marie. Okay, Carrie, I'm going to be sending you the stuff, the unicorn horn, and um, so you'll get to try one of them. You'll just have to let me know. Oops, I just closed that out. You'll have to let me know um, if you're home or still at your mom's. Okay, so this is going to kind of be, um, I hope I answered that question about the frame and the stencil. But yeah, you can take your heat gun and kind of seal. But I mean, it's not like anybody's going to get water on it. It won't just rub off to the touch. You would have to scratch it to get it off. Okay, so I'm going to get my bottom going here. Bottom of my carrot. Now, a bigger one like this, you might want to put some stuffing in. But now, even if you do a big one, I'm going to show you. Carrie says she's still at Mama. Okay. I will ship it there. Uh, you, you could cut it. So you can cut it smaller and do a, a shorter one. This is just the first year I've made any with the newspaper. And I thought that was a really cool idea because I throw away so much newspaper. I, I should take it somewhere and recycle it, but at one point we had our trash picked up in two different containers and they did recycle, but they don't do that anymore and I'm too lazy to separate it. I save a good bit for crafts, but this one's a little flimsy, so I definitely would, um, I want kind of a long one, so I'm going to cut it right there. And that's not straight. Turn it this way. Cut it. The paper's just fun to work with. But see, this is real thin. So I would stuff this with the filling, and then I would, I'm going to wrap Jude around it because I, I want a couple in my basket just like that. But if you didn't want it this tall, then you could cut it right there, you know, and make a, a short carrot. And that gives it a little more firmness down here where there's so many layers wrapped. But that, that's the large size, which is going to be the, like this one. And then when you get up here to the top, put your stuffing in and then just kind of fold your paper or glue it. Make sure you put your uh, greenery in first. Let's go back to our paint here. This is definitely going to take two coats of this orange. And it is not drying as dark as the other, but that's okay. I definitely, before time for pumpkins, I'm gonna have to look for a different color. Something a little darker than this. This even has like the ridges to where you can uh, 
mark your little lines. Okay, so I showed you how to fold the paper. And with this one, you just paint it, and then I'm going to show you how to put the green ring in the top. Now I want to show you how to make the one, one of the ones like this with, with fabric. And um, with fabric, there's a couple of things. You know you can get online. Let me show you. And you can print out free carrot um, outlines. So there's like this one, which it's not some of the, you, do you want it smaller and thinner? So I have several different shapes of carrots here. You can take your material and, and just cut out a shape like this and lay your material flat, double it, and cut out two pieces. And then I would use pinking shears and then just glue around, stuff it. And you kind of have a flat, a flatter carrot rather than one real puffy. But if you want uh, a good, there's my pinking shears. If you want a good um, cloth one, I just, <laughs> I had an old Texas Longhorn t-shirt. <laughs> and that's what I used to make that one. So I'll show you what I did. I just took my t-shirt and I'm probably going to do this side now. And you want, whatever size you want, um, just cut you out like a triangle. For that large one, my triangle is eight inches across, and each one of the little things, they're at an angle. Does not have to be perfect, because you're gonna glue it. Um, it's about 11 to the top. And then this is the smaller one. Did I write on it? It's uh, five inches by about seven inches tall. So let's let's cut out a a big one. Doesn't matter on the shirt or the material, but you you don't want to double it. You just want it laying there. And and just trace there again. You know, crafting doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to be gluing the sides anyway. You you could use, is it called the seam tape or something like that? The tape, I mean, that's what we did with this one, I'm pretty sure, last year. Um, because that's a really straight seam and you don't see any glue. You know the stuff that comes on a roll, you pull it out, you lay it on here, fold it over, and then take your iron and a damp cloth to seal it. You can stitch it by hand if you want to. Um, but we're gonna use glue tonight. It doesn't have to be fabric glue, but I'm just gonna roughly draw this out a little bit. I said it doesn't have to be perfect at all. And then I'm just gonna cut get it going here and then I can turn it around and cut normal. I just didn't want to go out to my storage shed and look for fabric so I use this old t-shirt. It's probably closer to the color than anything. Yeah. And then um, carrots actually have the roots at the bottoms of them too, don't they? I mean, we always just put the greenery at the top, but... Well, it's a little finger roots. Yeah. You see, I'm, I'm not trying to do this perfect at all. And then when I get this done, I'm gonna fold it over and then I'm gonna turn it wrong side out. Ooh, I got that really thin. Definitely went in there. Okay, so let's see, I wanna do it this way so that um, when I turn it 
how you want to see my yeah see I didn't get that anywhere close to the same so we're just gonna trim that up a little try to get the two sides a little the same but you can even um, trim it after you um, glue it you want to make sure that you give it time to dry otherwise your cotton will stick like crazy to the glued edges so I'm just gonna run like I said you could stitch this if you want to but you don't want any holes so you don't want to leave any spots and I'm just running a bead of glue right on the edge <clears throat> This is kind of the same way we made our bunny stuffed bunnies last year too. And um, what do we do? Stuff um, strawberries. And... Okay. So I'm going to give that just a second to set up before I try turning it and ripping it up, open. Let's go back to this carrot. Okay. I could give it another coat, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> with the stems. See, I've used most of this one, but this one is, is pretty good. So I'm just gonna clip it off fairly close, and you're gonna make a little hole in the top of that styrofoam. And you decide, you can either do it really thick or really thin. See if I can take my scissors and just kind of make a hole in this, fill it full of glue. Then you can wrap a ribbon around it, you can wrap burlap around it. I just want them to go in far enough. Okay, I think that's enough greenery on the top, so I'm going to some glue down in there and stick them back in there. Karen's really cute. I, I think the unicorn horns make really cute carrots. It's so simple, so easy. So you could take this and you put ribbon here or you can put glue here. And like I said, if you want to, uh, the little take some antiquing wax or just kind of come in here and make lines with the marker. Here, Marie, put love it, and she put a carrot emoji out by the <laughs> But the one with the unicorn things is just so, so simple. And I may give it one more coat of the orange before I put it in my basket. And then, so anyway, that's the, the unicorn one. All right, let's go back to our cloth one. See if we're dry. I don't want to pull it apart. Okay, I think we can probably turn it now. This can be a little challenging, but the other one I did, I don't think I went all the way to the tip. There's a little wooden rod that they give you in your polyfill that helps, but I think I just last time took um, the end of that paintbrush. Let me take a pencil. And you just work it till you get. And if you cut it too long and you don't want your carrot that long, you can leave part of it in there for filling. All you're doing is hiding the seam, right? Yeah, I'm putting the seam to the inside. And you just, you don't want to mess up your seam here. You just want to be careful. And get it to go through there. K 
Terry Marie says, I didn't hear, but what is the fabric you're using, or is it fleece? This is a t-shirt, a Texas Longhorn t-shirt. You can use, the last year I had this pretty pink and white polka dot, and we used it. And made them a little fatter. Orange and white, not pink and white. Yeah, orange and white. I'm not colorblind, I'm just brain dead. <laughs> it's been a long day. I haven't really done anything. I, I told Dad earlier, I cleaned out two drawers. My sock drawer and then one in the bathroom. So I kind of feel like I got something accomplished today. See, the end of your carrot doesn't have to be a, a, a point point. So that's pretty much what we've got there. There's our seam. Okay, then you're going to take just the polyfill. Carrie Marie says she's brain dead too. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, I tried to watch your live and uh, finally just had to cut it off and go back and watch. I'll have to go back and watch the replay because it kept interrupting and I was missing what you were saying. So you're just you're just gonna fill your carrot if you do any type of cloth. And like I said, this one, did I write the size on my triangle? For the larger one, you want the bottom to be about eight inches and then the very tip top is about 10 high. But just play with it if you want a smaller um, carrot. I'm just trying to get this to go on down to the bottom and not pull out my seam. I, but I really do think by far my favorite one is the ones what made with paper wrapped with twine and then painted. I just think, I don't know if you can see it up close, Ed may can get it, put it closer to the camera, but it just has that texture. Um, but I really, I like the texture that that one does. And that's just newspaper. And then I took twine and wrapped around it and then I painted the twine. And we're going to put our stems in to where they kind of go down in this cotton and batting stuff and stick to it. And then you, uh, we're going to tie it up with twine. Okay, I think that's good. Karen Marie said that oh, she thinks she's going to use another video platform. To do her lives because Facebook's not doing a good job. Oh, um, yeah. And she's I had have, her internet checked and it was okay. Yeah, I have a feeling, Carrie, too, that they're probably going to want to start charging us for Facebook lives. You'll have to let me know what platform you're going to use. We need to try some different things. What did I do with my scissors? Oh, I don't want those. I want. The what? What pair would you want? No, I don't want the scissors. I want my. Uh, what do you call them? Dykes. Right there in the bottle cup. In the cup. <laughs> like these I'm going to cut a little bit longer. Because I'm going to use like that big one and then I'm going to use this one. I think I'm going to use another one. But you just pick out whatever kind of um, leafy thing that you... You could use um, you could use twine and pull it apart. You could use uh, raffia, and it would be good too. Judy Crafton just came on and said, "Hello, I'll have to catch the replay." Okay, Judy. I'm I'm glad the replay is always available. Just a little bit, and I'm going to stick, 
I'm going to put some glue on my batting and then stick my greenery down into it. Do y'all talk to yourself when you're crafting? Seem like I talk to myself a lot. Judy C Crafton says, sorry, I'm in Tennessee visiting my grandson. Ah, well, be safe. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of gather it right there and I'm actually going to um, cut this twine and use a little piece of it. Actually, I, no, because I want, I just want enough to tie it pretty good. And then I'll put, I'll put the black and white ribbon on it because that's, that goes with my decor better. But it's pretty much up to you as to how fat, how big, how tall <laughs> you want to make them. Karen says she always talks to herself. Yeah. I told Julie it was okay to talk to herself as long as she didn't start answering. But I do. He'll holler, what? And I'm like, I am wasn't talking to you. Talking to myself. Okay. And then just, you know, shape your carrot the way you want it. And, you know, t certainly don't worry about doing two exactly alike. Because there's no two carrots exactly alike. All right, and see, I will put the small bow. I will put it on here, too. Now, this one, I, I did the thinner raffia. So, and then all I did was take my black marker and just kind of jag it up. Okay, but that gets that one. Now, if I was going to do uh, one out of the smaller, then I would do the same thing. It's just this is the larger, this one is the smaller. I probably will keep these patterns. Um, Gary Marie says she can see these in different orange pat patented pattern. Form. Patterns, mm-hmm. That's what all of these are going to go in my... And I went ahead and put, like I said, I was not crazy about this one, but it's different. But I probably, I think I have four more of these huge pins left. I'll think of another craft to use. Three, I want one of them. Oh, what you need it for. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I, I've got a few of the, um, I only have one like this. And I may go out and dig through my stuff and get the other one. But like I said, my favorite are these just done with paper and, and twine. Um, this definitely needs stuffed a little bit because it's a little flimsy. But now the little ones are cute. If you need something for a tear tray, those are really cute. Um, didn't care for the ones with the pine cones. And I'm gonna look for an, a different um, color of orange but I guess you could use you know different colors but I'll probably give this another coat but by far these are the simplest you know the shape the look um, and I'll show if you came on late I'll show you again they're called unicorn foam unicorn horns from Hobby Lobby I want to say there's four four pieces for $3.99 so they're about a dollar a piece but they're really cute. But um, Carrie is gonna get this one and I'm gonna throw in these cute little bottle brush trees um, and some greenery for, for that. Carrie said the horns would be good to do with kids. Yeah, because they wouldn't have to do much except paint. You could use just about any kind of paint. But um, I am gonna finish the twine wrapping with this one. Let me just get this down in there. Because I had to cut off my twine. I didn't buy, bring but one roll of it in here. But that's the good thing about this. But I will finish doing this one and paint it orange. And just brush over like I did these. So, okay. 
that's pretty much it for tonight. Like I said, I wanted to show you some very inexpensive ways uh, to make, and I probably will go ahead and paint these and do another small one for my tear tray. Um, but that's it for tonight. Really <coughs> quick and easy carrots. Uh, mix all kinds of different fabric. I just bought some fabric from Hobby Lobby that is the um, Pioneer Woman. And we're gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it for spring, but we're gonna do some stuffing or smudge podge it on something because it's, it's like four, maybe five different pieces of material that all coordinate colors. But that would be really, really pretty to do. Um, and like I said, I, I kind of like the really fat carrots. Um, maybe I need to do one more of those for my basket. But Okay, well, I appreciate y'all joining me tonight. Um, we will be back Monday. Not sure yet what I'm going to do. Um, but I'll find something. And it, but it will be something Easter. I'm probably going to try to do Easter things. Ed said a while ago he was tired of Easter. <laughs> but what he meant was he wanted more inspiring. Uh, he has risen stuff. And um, that's... I'm not, I'm not a bunny. I don't do carrots. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of hard to do, you know, unless you want to make a cross. Karen, Karen Hahn says, I just made one of the egg wreaths during the live. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to put on my door. I've got quite a few options, but we'll see. All right, well, we will see you Monday at 6 o'clock, and y'all have a great weekend. Be careful um, and spread the love, spread the joy, and I'll see y'all Monday.